Thank you for attending The Tempest. Your show will begin momentarily. In the meantime, please feel free to kick back and relax in our lobby.
to our gilded spoke VIP lounge. But if you can find something that proves you have what it takes to be a proper helmsman, we may be willing to make an exception.
our construction, we are going through a stage. Literally. An actor fell through the floor last week. Wow, look at this place. Wow. Hey, uh, I, uh, I've been around here for a while and never, never been over to this place. What you got there? Is that a little, uh, a little bit of the old, uh, fuzzy grape juice? Uh, you mind if I, uh, take a little, uh, a little snippet of that? Thank you so much. Gosh, that reminds me of my favorite joke. I know we just met, guys, but uh, my name's Ted, by the way. Um, here's my favorite joke. It involves, of course... Skeletons. Okay, uh, stop me if you've heard this one before, but it's a short joke, so don't stop me, because uh, by the time you try and stop me, it, I'll forget it. I'm, I should have just started telling the joke. Okay. Um, <clears throat> hiya. But, okay, so um, I'm about to tell a joke. Okay, so a skeleton walks into a bar. He says, give me a beer and a mop. You get it? That's, that's the joke. That's the whole joke. You're right there. Yeah, see, it takes a second, right? <laughs> Give me a beer and a mop. <laughs> he's, at least he's a conscientious guy, right? He likes to drink, but he, he's also conscientious about, you know, having the floor be a mess. Gosh, hold on. No. Mm. Me, on the other hand, I'm just pretending to drink this because, look, there's no liquid in it. <laughs> it's a make-believe world out there. There you go. Hey, nice to meet you, Ted. Uh, what is this place, by the way? It looks like a, uh... Like a, like a... It's a swirl. It's a cinnamon swirl... Adventure... Experience. It's a, it's a... It's a, it's a, oh, it's a, it's a hypnotist's den. It's a den for hypnotists. trash and take your belongings with you. Aha, uh -huh. okay, a party hat, is this a clue? Uh, I, I don't really like hats very much. I mean, because I got one already, mine's good. I'm told they're big business, but it's just... Are you showing me something over here? Whoa! Hey, I didn't mean to steal your wine! Sorry about that, I'm gonna set that right there for you. Boop! What do you got here? A storm. Huh. A storm. Wait, this looks like a, um, like a theater. Is this a theater? Oh, oh, hey, thanks. All right. Nice. A theater. Wait, wait, wait. So this, is this one of the shows, the theater? Aha. Go. I felt really tingly all of a sudden, and everything went black. I was moving along what I felt like was a birth canal. And what did I see at the end? The face... Well, the face of Dwayne The Rock Johnson. He was beckoning me to the other side. He was saying, come. Come, Ted. Come. And I almost said, okay. And it was the warmest place. I said, that's exactly where I want to be. Wherever Dwayne is, I want to be there. Wrapped up in a sleeping bag like a little toasty sausage with him. Oh, imagine being in an oversized sleeping bag cr cuddled up next to Dwayne the Rock Johnson. <laughs> I don't even mean that in a, in a, in a, in a sort of, um, you know, uh, well, even, uh, I'll just say it a sexual way. I'm just saying, uh, uh, platonically, wouldn't it be nice to cuddle up to someone that's like three times your size? You know, feels like a giant next to you, and they can just kind of hold you, you know, like you were a little baby once again. Whoa! Oh, boy, Buster. That's a big Buster. Do you mind if I just, you know... 
Okay, hold on, guys. Oh, boy. Wait, Buster, no. Okay. Okay. Here we go. I'm oh, just gonna cuddle up with you here, Buster. Okay. Ah. Ah. Oh, I feel so good. I'm the big spoon. I'm always the big spoon. I know you wouldn't think it when you, you meet a guy like me and you, you'd think maybe I'd be a little spoon most of the time, but no, I'm the big spoon. Ah, uh, Buster. Ah. Uh, all right, that that was nice. I don't want to get carried away or fall asleep here. I don't even know where I am. I thought I knew every single corner of the under, but you, you sometimes you turn a corner and and then uh, you know you never know what you're gonna find. Last week, or what seems like was last week, I walked into a giant Dairy Queen run by poodles. The entire staff were giant poodles. And, and they weren't even walking around like anthropomorphic, like, you know, you might see in the under. No, they were, like, walking on all fours, but they still had the uniforms and the name tags on. And it's funny, because the name tags were sort of underneath, and they had to kind of stand out on their hind legs to show you the, you, you know, the name tag and everything. But they were walking around on all fours, and but they were doing a great job. Serving lots of ice cream and, and ice cream treats like a blizzard. You ever had a blizzard milkshake treat at the Dairy Queen? Oh, man. Never had, do you know what the Dairy Queen is? Oh man, this guy, this guy hasn't been living. You got to find yourself a Dairy Queen, get yourself a frozen dairy dessert treat and, 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 and feel like a king for, or a queen, you know, whatever, what have you for a minute or two. Dairy Queen, Dairy, Dairy Queen. I named my first daughter Dairy Queen. Dairy Queen Johansson. Uh, and then, you know, of course I had guests. We are four more daughters after. Please finish your drink. Take stock of your hey, you're going to see a show? Yeah, you're going to see this show. There's this show. Oh, boy. I wonder if I could go, too. Oh. Crap. Jesus! <laughs> oh my goodness, you scared the bejesus out of me. Hello, 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 hello everybody. Welcome to my home, or I guess I should say our home for the next little chunk of time, shouldn't I? My name is James. It's a pleasure to see all of you, to see some of you again. Yes, indeed. Hello, welcome. Come, gather around the fire. Let's warm up. Oh, well... It was a bit larger earlier when we started. Uh, hey, would you guys mind grabbing some things from around yeah, the yard and just tossing them in? Let's get a real big fire going. A razor. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> nice. Burn, baby, burn. It's a disco inferno. Burn, baby, burn. Good and down. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Look at that. There we go. Whew, come around. Gather around, masks. Let's warm ourselves up by the fire. <laughs> Not that we need to be any warmer in the middle of summer, but, you know, <laughs> there's something comforting about fire, something safe. Even though I know it's not real, you know, it's still, it evokes the feeling. Kind of like uh, the Decameron, you know, the Decameron? Have any of you heard about the Decameron? Yes, 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 indeed. Well, if you haven't, it's one of the earliest stories ever written. It's uh, about a group of people around a campfire, exchanging stories while waiting out the bubonic plague. Yes, indeed. Kind of sounds familiar, doesn't it? Telling each other stories while waiting out a, uh, well, you get the rest. <laughs> Anyways, here's our fire, so let me begin with our story, shall I? This story begins with the truth. I, just like you, am in two places at once right now. I am here standing around this fire, but I'm also in Los Angeles, standing in the middle of my apartment, hoping to God I'm not about to run into my television or knock the coffee off of the table next to me. Oh, and being that I'm in Los Angeles, we might hear helicopters or sirens or gunshots. Don't be alarmed. All the world is a stage. This is day-to-day -day stuff, you know. <laughs> oh, man. 
the stage. Ah, there's something so special about being with other people, you know? Being able to bounce off each other's ideas, play around a little bit. It's, you know, hey, through the grace of technology and the power of Tentacloth, here we all are together in the middle. Yes, it's incredible. Do you guys want to jump into a story and play and jump, you know? <laughs> I thought you might. That's why you're here. If you haven't guessed already, the story that we're about to explore is called The Tempest by William Shakespeare. Now, this play begins with a storm raging in the middle of the ocean. Yes, a ship is being tossed back and forth at sea, and there are sailors on the ship trying to pilot it, trying to save their lives in the middle of this ocean. You three here... You are going to be our sailors. Yes, indeed. I'm going to send you up to the balcony in just a bit. Don't worry. I know you can't speak. I'll say all of your lines for you. But a lot of acting has to come from how we relate to each other in space. Physicality. That's right. So why don't we just take a group warm-up real quick. We'll do the wrists. Get the wrists going. The elbows. We really want some blood pumping. That's, you know, shoulders. Yeah, get all of those wing space open. The laterals. You feel all of that. And then be very careful with the neck one of the most important parts of the body just love it just love it that's all you need to do to the neck there you go wonderful all right I'm gonna send you three up to the balcony I want you to get acquainted with your props I want you to get acquainted with your space know where you are and also your mental landscape remember you're in the middle of a frantic storm fighting for your life that's right are you guys ready Wonderful. Well then, away you go. Which means that you and I, we are going to be the backstage crew up top. Don't know if I've told you this already, but, you know, as I was acting in Los Angeles, I built sets for a living for the theater. I did, yes indeed. And uh, what I learned when I was doing that is a lot of the, uh, well, magic that we see happen on the stage comes from the backstage crew. You know, it's built by an army of invisible people working around the clock. So what we're going to do is we're going to use these flashlights to simulate lightning. Exactly. And also tell ghost stories later on. Perfect. Oh, look up there, you guys. We're going to need you. We're going to need to assign you some parts. We need some people bringing in the sails. We need some people piloting the ship. All right. There you go. Continue warming up. Perfect. You guys are ready. Now, do you know how to click these flashlights on and off? Tick, 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 trigger. There it is. Wonderful. You're going to use that for the lightning. And when you do, snap along with it to create thunder that is going to shake the very bowels of the ship. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Wonderful. Are you guys ready up there? You look ready. Perfect. All right. Well, the play begins. The curtains part. The stage directions read, A tempestuous noise of thunder. <laughs> and lightning. You guys are in the middle of a storm. There are hundred mile an hour winds. Rain is pelting your face and someone is shouting orders at you from the distance. Hi, my heart! Cheerily, cheerily, my heart! Yar, yar, you there, mask! Take in the top sail! Tend to the master's whistle! Blow, mask! Blow till thou burst thy wind if room enough. Very good. Oh, wait. Masks, watch out. There's a giant wave coming. It's about to slam into the side of you. Boosh! It hits you. Yes, indeed. And it's going to knock you over. You're too heavy. You need to throw everything overboard. Anything that's not nailed down, toss it aside. Yes. Yes. Oh, no. Oh, no. Take in the topsail. The wind is catching your sail. Bring her to try with the main course. You're doing all you can. But the wave, the storm, they're too powerful. They're pushing your ship over there's only one course left you need to jump jump off of the ship plunge into the foaming brine masks jump <laughs> wonderful welcome back masks welcome back you have survived the storm yes indeed incredible 
A round of snaps for you all. A round of snaps for our mask who helped me with the magic behind the scenes. Yes, Andy, but, but we can't celebrate too quickly yet. You guys have proven that your imaginations are rife with the spirit. I want to use the magic in your masks to take us into the fateful storm when this ship befell its fate. Here you all go. Grip your mask in your hand. Pull it off of your face. Set the shard on top of the mask. That's right. Let go. Snap in the center and move your hand counterclockwise around the edge. Perfect. You all have got it. <laughs> yes. 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 Good. You see this vessel here? You have performed to the point the tempest that I bade thee. The scene has been set. But there's more work. By accident most strange, bountiful fortune hath mine enemies brought to this shore. Go, make thyselves like nymphs of the sea. Be subject to no sight but thine and mine, invisible to every eyeball else. Come, let me see you take this shape. Use your imaginations, masks. How would you be invisible? Yes, this is how we use that gesture work. That's right. Wonderful. Perfect. Ah, you all are ready. Gather hands. I'm going to summon my spirit, Ariel, to take us to that fateful day when this ship befell its misfortune. Come, my Ariel! Approach! I boarded the king's ship. Now in the beak, now in the waist, in the deck, in every cabin, I flamed amazement. The fire and cracks of most sulfurous roaring, the most mighty Neptune seemed to besiege and make his bold waves tremble, yea, his dread tried and shake. All but the mariners plunged into the foaming brine, they quit the vessel. Ferdinand was the first man that leaped. He cried, Hell is empty, and all the devils are here! And he dove off the side of the ship down into the waters where he met... A spirit got a little bit of water on your mask there you might want to shake it off here yeah, there you go you know if they rust you can't do magic anymore that's like the whole point of it anyway anyways welcome to the home of our main character a wizard called Prospero who was betrayed by his own brother who teamed up with his arch enemy the king of a foreign country his name is Alonzo they teamed up to kick Prospero out of his home with his baby daughter in tow and steal his government from him. A terrible life, as you can imagine. <laughs> yes, indeed. But Prospero, being the wizard that he is, faced the elements and ended up here on this island where he built this home to approximate the luxuries that he was used to. All of these items here came from his past life. They have a certain uh, identity in them, uh, uh, a story 
if you will, from their time with Prosper. I want you to take some time, explore. There's an upstairs and a downstairs as well. To get upstairs, you go outside to the left. The downstairs is right there. Find an object that calls out to you. Bring it back to me, and we'll unlock the story of Prospero. There you go. Oh, did you get stuck in the pool? Ah, nah, you found your way out. Hey, look at that. <clears throat> what's that, what's that spell to make things float again? What is it, it's Wingardium Leviosa or Leviosa? I never get it right. Is it Leviosa or Leviosa? You know the ones who make things float? Leviosa, Leviosa, that's just, I, I can't ever remember, it's so much easier to fly around. And the one, and the, and, oh god, the book of spells, it's been so long since I've looked at my book of spells, yes indeed. Do you, ah, uh, money, 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 indeed, wait, we're just waiting on one more mask and there you are. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right. Let us dive into these objects and unlock the story of this dude, Prospero. Why don't we begin at the beginning? Indeed. Prospero, before he was kicked out of his home, was the ruler of the government of a little place called Milan. But he wanted to study magic, so he let his brother rule the government for him for a time being, thinking that he could trust his brother. In other words, for my study's sake, I cast the government upon my brother, and to my state grew stranger, being transported and wrapped in secret studies. Me, poor man, my library was dukedom large enough, but of temporal royalties, my brother now thought me incapable. Just because I wanted to study magic, he thought I didn't know how to run the government anymore. He's a big jerk. He's a big jerk with a capital J. Tell you, Antonio is his name. Remember that name. If you ever meet him in line, just like, psh, right in the face. Say it's from Prospero. Yeah, indeed. Uh, why, you may ask, does a brother turn on a brother? Well, everyone has their price. It's an unfortunate fact, but it's true. It's true. And Antonio certainly had a price that the king of Naples, my arch nemesis, Alonzo, was willing to pay. My own brother, Antonio, made an alliance, so dry he was for sway, with the king of Naples to give him annual tribute, to do him homage, to subject his coronet to his crown and bend the dukedom, yet unbowed. Alas, poor Milan to most ignoble stooping. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> yes, you see, my brother, having both the key of officer and office, set all the hearts in the state to what tune pleased his ear. So now he was the ivy that had hid my princely trunk and sucked my verdure out on it. That's the power of word. You've heard, you've heard that the pen is mightier than the sword. In this case, they're kind of equal, to be honest. But he was able to sign into law policies that benefited him over me. And slowly, like a shadow creeping across the earth, he took everything away from me. Yes, indeed. And it wasn't just by policy, no. With all the honors on my brother, a treacherous army was levied, and one midnight, fated to the purpose, did Antonio open the gates of Milan, and in the dead of darkness, the ministers for that purpose hurried thence, me and thy crying selves. Yes. Terrible memories. 
terrible memories all around. The worst I don't keep in my head. You know, why do you keep those in your head? Especially if you got magic, a little bit of a rudimentary understanding of magic. You can pull the memory right out of your head and stick it in, in any inanimate object. I chose, of course, that bottle over there where I keep the worst memory when I lost all hope at sea. Invisible to the naked eye, of course. I don't want anyone viewing it, but if you take this staff and tap the bottle, it will become visible. Uh. Take it off the shelf. Give it a give it a look. You see anything in there? It's terrifying, isn't it? It's terrible. It's the day that I lost all hope. Oh, here. You know what? Why don't we pour it in the pool, and then you can stir the waters of the pool with your staff. That way, all all of us can see it. Yeah, there you go. There it is. Come on over here, Mask. Got the best view of the worst day of my life, right over here. I say the worst day of my life because, I mean, look at us. We just survived the storm. All of our stuff is tossed in the ocean. We don't have any food. We don't have any water. I don't know whether or not my daughter's gonna live or die, whether or not I can provide for her. Do you know the kind of strain that puts on a parent? We won't, we won't get into it. But when I had lost all hope, I looked at Miranda. It was Miranda that did preserve me. She smiled with a fortitude infused from heaven to bear up against what should ensue. I mean, after all, my people provided our escape aboard this rotten carcass of a boat. It wasn't rigged, it had no tackle, no sail, nor mast. The very rats instinctively had quit it. But there they hoist us to cry to the sea that roared to us, to sigh to the winds whose pity sighing back again did us with loving wrong. It's a terrible, terrible, terrible time. Well, now you all know my most intimate secrets. You're like feel like we're kind of like family now a little bit. I feel like we can be honest with each other. Can I Can I be honest with you, Mass? Can I tell you something? No judgment? Yes, indeed? All right, well, I have to pee. I really have to pee, and the sounds of the waters are not helping at all. You know, this is just uh, a word to the wise. Don't jump into VR if you've had a full pot of coffee. That's just not, not a smart thing to do, okay? So if you guys don't mind, we're going to take a quick intermission real quick. Is that, yeah, good with everyone? Perfect, okay. Well, we don't have time to summon the spirit Ariel back to us, so we're going to have to do this manually. Everyone grab hands. I don't want to lose anybody jumping through time and space. Here we go. If this is your first time traveling interdimensionally, welcome! Please keep your masks and hands inside the temporal field at all times. If you get nauseous, don't puke out in front of you. Puke out to the side of the wormhole. We'll let another dimension deal with that one. We know you have many choices when traveling in and out of stories, and we are just so happy that you are here with us right now. Now, without any further delay, on to the intermission! Welcome! Yes, we've got some mid-show snacks for you here. Please enjoy. I'm just gonna go up to the house. Uh-oh. Uh Uh-oh. I think I left my keys back in the story. Oh, man. You know what? I'm just gonna head into these bushes over here. You all, uh, enjoy your marshmallows. I gotta answer the call of the wild real quick. Oh my god! 
Okay. Oh my god. Emergency. Emergency, friends. Uh, emergency, emergency. Uh, I, I peed myself. I did. I peed myself. I got it all over my toes. Uh, I feel it soaking in between my sandals. This is disgusting. I can't bend down because it just bubbles up. Would, would someone mind grabbing the toilet paper and just mopping the pee up from between my toes? There's nothing weird about this, remember? We're all friends. Come, come on, Druid Mask. Druid Mask, you look you look called to it. Yeah, well, you just... Uh, uh, oh, oh, thank you. Oh, my. I don't even know why I wore sandals today. It was terrible. It is raining. I should have known better the costume. It's just a costume they gave me. Oh, thank you so much. The old adage is true. Friends who've peed are friends indeed. Thank you, Druid Man. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Well, now that all of that is nice and uh, taken care of, taken care of, taken care of, taken care of, there we go. You guys want to jump back into the story? Should we get this? Yeah? All right. Well, let's gather hands. Here we go. Sorry, I didn't have time to wash them before we got back to the circle. All right. Here we go. Welcome to Prospero's Island, friends. I call it Prospero's Island because everything that happens on this island is by Prospero's doing. Remember, He's a wizard. He can command the natural elements to his whim. Yes, indeed. But I can see that you're all being stimulated by the photons attacking your eyeballs and probably, you know, the sugar pulsing through your veins from the marshmallows. Why don't you take 60 seconds, run around, explore the island, do magic. You've got magic. Yes, indeed. I trust you to be in charge of your own time. Come back at the end of 60 seconds. Ooh. My goodness. Yeah, there you go. Nice. That's that's the way to do it. Do you have a uh, do you have a bottle opener? Do you know? I'm trying. I like oh like the lighter? Does that does that work with wine bottles? Yes. Here. You know what? I've got an idea. There we go. Here. Just just be careful. You don't wanna you don't wanna cut your lips. You know, yeah, there. Yeah. Well yeah, off the mask. There you go. It's like a it's like a luge. It's like an ice luge, but <laughs> there you go. Wonderful. Alright, I'll just water. Oh, God damn it. Damn it. I really can't get this costume dirt. At this they'll charge me for it if I don't return the costume back pristine, you know? Alright. Well. This'll be our little secret, okay? Mum's the word. Mum's the word. Perfect. Oh, man. Well, better get to work. Nice. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yes, you know exactly what it's from. Yeah, yes. <laughs> oh, well. Well, welcome back, everybody. All right. Well. Are we ready to jump back into the story? I was just collecting a pile here. I was thinking about having a luau later. Has anyone been to a luau, by the way? Just a quick question. A kind? What's a kind of luau? What's a, like, a luau-themed party? Eh, yeah, I get it. I get it. See, I thought, you know, I've never, ever been to a luau, and it's one of those things that I think you always hear about. Like, everyone knows what it is, but nobody's actually been to a proper luau, you know? It's strange. It's strange. It's like like uh, luau's, UFOs, and cats. Nobody knows what's actually going up with any of them. You know? All right, well, putting that aside, here we go. <clears throat> Back into the story. No story is complete without a little bit of love and romance and this story is no different here in this island the daughter of prospero a little girl named miranda falls in love with the strong young prince his name is ferdinand he happens to be the son of prospero's sworn enemy king alonzo dun 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 i know drama already 
But true love does conquer all. Who feels like they have the blushing movements of a nubile young flower and they want to play our Miss Miranda? Yes? Yes? Hands in the air. Beautiful! I love it! Yes, you've got a beautiful flower crown on now, Miranda. Welcome to the scene. Lovely! Oh, amazing. And who feels like they are strapping young Prince Ferdinand, strong, intelligent, and mopey? Anyone? Anyone? Yeah? Yes? Is it? Are you guys back? Oh, hand in the air. That's what I'm talking about. There we go. Amazing. All right. Well, you've got a beautiful musketeer hat on now. Yes, indeed. You are looking the part. Cheese mask, I want you to be Miranda's confidant. You're her best friend. Everything that happens goes through you, okay? You know all of her deepest, darkest secrets. You need to help her navigate the treacherous waters of love that she's about to embark on, okay? All right. Head on over there. And you, Tampa's mask, come on over. I think you know exactly what you're going to do. You and Ferdinand have been friends from the cradle. That's right. You are best buds. You are bros all the way. Everything that you have gone through, you have gone through together. So, it's right that you are here with Ferdinand because Ferdinand thinks that his dad is dead. Yes, indeed. Oh, I, know. I probably should have broken that more delicately to you. I know. I'm sorry, bud. I, yeah, I, I know. It's just sometimes that's the way it is. You don't get warning, and that's just how it happens. So this complicates the scene a little bit because you're a bit mopey. You're mourning your father, you know what I mean. You're throwing a pity party over there behind that tree. Why don't you and your friend go over there? Yes, exactly. That's right. Now... Even though you're throwing a pity party for yourself, you have enough room in your heart to fall in love with this, the most beautiful woman you have ever seen. Now, it's about to play out. I won't be here. I know how weird it is to fall in love in front of your parents. So I'm going to disappear, let you guys have a little bit of fun, but not too much fun. All right? I think we're still trying to fit in that T for teen right now. You get me? All right. Trust me. Here we go. Have fun, you guys. Crossbow is gone. Ferdinand, you come out from behind the tree. Yeah, that's right. You're trying to drown your sorrows. You happen to, you stumble, let's say you stumble around the tree. There you go. You kick one back. You think life is over, but you turn and you hear the voice of the most beautiful woman singing into the world. Yes, and just like that, talking with her best friend. They're singing together. Now, you know you have to shape up, so you're not going to walk up with her with a beer in your head, slug it, and get rid of the beer, my friend. you got to present yourself. There you go. And now, Miranda, you feel the presence of somebody staring at you. You turn and you see this drunken creeper. But he's the most beautiful creeper you have ever seen. Something about him just draws you in. You've never seen a man so gorgeous. In fact, you say to your best friend, What is it? A spirit? I might call it a thing divine, for nothing natural I ever saw so noble. And hearing the voice of this angel, Ferdinand, you don't wait for an invitation. You blurt out, you get right on in there, and you say, Most sure! The goddess on whom these heirs attend. Oh, you wonder if you'll be made or no. <laughs> no wonder, sir, but certainly a maid. My language, heaven. Myself am Naples, who with mine eyes never since I have beheld the king. My father. <laughs> he breaks down, he cries in front of you. What are you going to do, Miranda? He's crying in front of you. Go across your head. He says, oh, yeah, there you go. Best friend, where are you? Don't turn your back. Come on, get in here. There you go. Oh, yes. Oh, a little love fest. Amazing, amazing. But, 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 this swift business we must uneasy make lest too light winning make the prize light. You gotta play hard to get. 
Am I right? We want to make sure that Ferdinand's not just trying to hit it and quit it. But you know that his love is true, Miranda. You say, there's nothing ill can dwell in such a temple. And Ferdinand, once you get past wiping your snot away, you get angry that anyone challenged your honor in the first place, and you pick up a sword. That's right. And you challenge Prospero to a duel. (gasps) He what? Spirits! Come! Defend Prospero! That's right. And then the spirits and Ferdinand get into a giant fight. Dun dun! Dun dun dun! Shunkun dun dun shunkun dun 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 dun! Yun dun 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 He makes Ferdinand's sword too heavy to pick up. Yes, your sword is now too massy for your strengths and will not be uplifted. Your nerves are in thy infancy again and have no vigor in them. And now, to punish you for this insubordination, I charge you with a curse so terrible that not even the devil himself would wish it on his counterpart. It is the worst devised evil mankind has ever thought of. It's a little thing I like to call manual labor. <laughs> yes, indeed. I have been giving the luau idea some thought, and I think I want to. I think I want to have a luau. So, Ferdinand, it is your job to pile all of the wood here into a single pile because, uh, well, I want to have a luau. So there you go. All right, off to it. There you go, Miranda. You cannot help him. Okay, I'm your father. I forbid it. Spirit, please keep an eye on things. I trust you with that. And you, my friend, here, take this. Yes, indeed. I trust you to take care of that while I go to the store and look for things for the luau. All right? Is there anything you want? Is it pi- are you a pineapple person? Or is it, it doesn't matter? It, yeah? Pi- all right. Okay. Does anybody else anything from the store? Does anyone want anything from the store? Yeah? Yeah? What? You, can I get, like, Gatorade or something? Is it, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm perfect. And what are you, a Kit Kat? What's the, a Kit Kat? Yeah? All right. All right. Perfect. Ferdinand, you'll get something after you finish your work. All right. I'll be right back, guys. Now that Prospero's gone, Miranda, you're not going to sit around and do nothing. You try and help your love. That's right, you say, alas, now pray you work not so hard. If you'll sit down the while, I'll bear your logs to the pile. Pray give me that. But Ferdinand, you won't hear it. You tell your beloved, no. Precious creature, I had rather crack my sinews, break my back, than you should such dishonor undergo while I sit lazy by. And then, in the midst of your work, you take a moment to stare deeply into each other's eyes. Deeply, that's right. This is it. This is the moment. Oh, my God. Yeah, very close. There's zero space. Leave room for Jesus. My goodness. Yeah, there we go. Come on. All right. Ferdinand, staring deeply into Miranda's eyes, but having enough space that you can move your mouth, you say, Oh, you, so perfect and so peerless, created of every creature's best. And Miranda, you say, Not until after the wedding. Back up, back up. Oh, do you love me then? Ferdinand, you say, Beyond all limit of what else in the world do love, prize, and honor you. I am your wife if you will marry me. My mistress, dearest, I I thus humble ever. My husband then, I, with a heart as willing as bondage ever of freedom, here's my hands and my lips. And then you go for it. That's right. There you go. And all right, they didn't have any Kit Kats, but uh, what? What? Oh my God! Are you guys in Kit? Oh, this is amazing! I can't be mad at you anymore. Good. Oh my God! I could feel it from the moment. I mean, can you feel it in the air? I mean, can you feel the love tonight? Yes, it is where we are. But, but. We're going to put that on pause. 
So remember these emotions. Remember your psychic landscape right now. Okay, put it in your mental Rolodex. Did I just date myself? I know I did. If you have to ask if you dated yourself. Does anyone know what a Rolodex is? Look it up. Moving on. All right, here we go. We're going to not be lovers anymore. We're all going to be villains. That's right. We don't have to play by any rules anymore. <laughs> Everyone looks out for themselves. It's amazing. And you, my friend, you happen to be the king. All hail the king! You are all very rich, but this mask happens to be the richest, so we have to do what they say. That's right. And king, I have some very bad news for you. You think your son Ferdinand is dead? Yeah, uh, oh. Oh, you actually care. Oh, that's really sweet. I thought being the king you'd like have hundreds of sons or something, but no, you really care about Ferdinand. If only he was here to see this now. Oh, all right. Well, I'm going to need you to bury these feelings deep inside of you, like really unhealthy repression, like something that's going to come up in 20 years and ruin your life. Because in the immediate moment, you have the survival of your men to think about. That's right. You see... You ended up on this island because you and your men were partying on the royal yacht off the coast when Prospero summoned a storm and crash-landed you, not here on the beautiful side of the island, but on the far side of the island, which is just as beautiful, but it's not here, okay? And you all have to forage for your lives. Try and find food. Your belly is rumbling. You just had to swim for your life. Wait, come, come. He's still on the task. Come! Very good. Yes, very good. But you have to take orders from your king. I like your enthusiasm, though. Maybe you should promote this one. You see, they're a go-getter. You know, you really want a positive reinforcement on the go-getters. There you go. All right. But, like I said, you cannot go any further on this side of the island. You are banished. Do you accept your responsibilities? Yes? All right. Well then, I will not let you go any further. In other words, you shall not pass! <laughs> you there, you are all men of sin. And on this island, lingering position worse than death. Step by step, attend you and your ways. You fool! You could not hurt me any more than you could move the wind. Or with the mock stabs in the water. <laughs> I was sent by Prosper to torture you for all eternity. Is that wine? I think we can all move past this 
hospital. Every day he comes to me and he's like, Harpy, they kicked me out of my home. It's like, Jesus Christ, man, we all have wounds. I get it. Just God. You know? But I think it would make a big difference to him if you apologize. So what do you say? Are you all very sorry? Will you apologize the next time you see Pasparum? All right. Well, it seems my work here is done. I've got better things to do with my eternity. I'm sure you do come. Step into the temporal gateway, friends. This way, that's right. I'll send you to the wedding of Miranda and Ferdinand. This way, that's right. Pick a side, pick a side. Doesn't matter which. There you go. We're all same on the other side. Yep, that's right. Make your way to the gateway. There you go. Oh, it's a pleasure to see you. All right, take care. <laughs> Well, welcome back, Masks. Yes, indeed. Do you have anything to say for the way that you have treated Prospero all of these years? Huh? I... Oh. Oh. Well. All right. All right. You're a mensch. All is forget. Oh, I dropped my cupcake. Damn it. That's okay. The gesture is what's important. All is forgiven. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah, that was tentative. That was a... I'm not sure. It was, you're like a sniper. You were in and out. There's Steel Team 6 over here. All right. Friends, I know it's fun to play villains. You can do what you want when you want. But all things must pass. And this is no different. All right. We're going to let that go. We are no longer villains. We are returning to Miranda and Ferdinand, the lovers of our story. This is their wedding day, and they happen to have special guests here. The gods incarnate have shown up to bless your wedding day. Congratulations, dear. Yes. Look at that. Wonderful. But before you get married... We're going to have to do a little work around here. You're my only daughter, and I'm not going to let you get married in a shabby wedding venue. I wouldn't do that to you. This is your special day. So, before we get started, let's clean up around here a little bit. You remember that spell we did back in the fire stick, counterclockwise? Boom. We can do that here in this garden with the dead twigs. Restore these trees to life. Yes, indeed. Wonderful. Oh, glorious. Miranda, there's this one over here. Miranda, come, dear. Here you are. Uh huh. Uh huh. Snap. And now counterclockwise. You got it. Look, you did it. You brought the tree back to life. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. And look, we got a little bit of ozone back in the air. Incredible. I just... Oh, jeez. It's a sign from the gods. It's time. Quickly, everyone, over to the altar. We must marry you. Look. Oh, life is abundant. Amazing. Ferdinand. Yes, indeed. Good man. All right, you two. It's almost time. Now's the part where the gods dance their blessings. For the favor of your future. Are you ready? Gods, here we go. Take it away with the five. Five, the six, and the seven, and nine, and earth increase. Boys in plenty, barns and garners, never empty. Vines with clustering, bunches growing, plants with goodly burthens bowing. Spring come to you in the farthest at the very end of the harvest. Scarcity and want shall shun you. ba da ba da ba dum So the gods sing their blessings on you. ba ba gum da ga bum da ga bum da bum da ba ga bum da ga bum da ga bum da bum da bum da bum da bum da bum <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. And with that, you have been cleared 
for marriage. Marriage is a special ceremony. Marriage is amazing. You may become mass and mass. Yes, indeed. Oh, I know you're not shy. There we go. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, amazing. Incredible. Oh, Miranda. You've made me so happy. Not only did I get to see you married before I kicked the can, but by marrying Ferdinand, the son of our enemy, you have restored us to the throne that was stolen from us, and you have righted the wrongs of the past generations. Thank you. Thank you so much. I couldn't have done this without any of you. Come yet. Oh, son, good to see you. Yes. Oh, I'm so happy for you, dear. Oh, guys, get in here. Yes, indeed. Couldn't have done this without any of you. And so, I have a teensy tiny little gift for you all. Yes, mm. Indeed. We have weathered the storm and come out together on the other side. Which means that our adventure is almost over. But, we have a little bit of time before we must part from this illusion. Come, friends. Let's on to the epilogue. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the end! Yes. You see, now that everything has been righted, Prospero decides that magic is too powerful for one person. It brought too much pain in his life, and so he gives up his magic and becomes mortal once again. Our revels now are ended, and these, our actors, as I foretold you, were all spirits and are now melted into air, into the thin air. And, like the baseless fabric, of this vision. The cloud-capped towers, the solemn temples, the gorgeous palaces, the great globe itself, yea, all which it inherit, shall dissolve and leave not a rack behind. You see, we are such stuff as dreams are made of. <laughs> and our little life is rounded with a sleep. Come, friends, let's dance around the fire, celebrate our time together. <laughs> yes, indeed. Hey, I had a lot of fun, guys. Truly, thank you so much. This was really wonderful. <laughs> oh, oh, come, before it completely dissolves. Yes, come, everyone, together. Let's, in the time-tested traditions of theater, let's grab hands, everybody. We're going to take a company bow to honor the space that we have been given, to honor each other for being present in this space, and to honor the gods that find their way in and out of everything, those tricky little devils. On three, here we go, and three, and two, and one, and bow. Mm. Friends, audience, spirits which have been my charge, now, to the elements be free, and fare thou well, friends. Remember me. Remember me in your travels. Remember!